In today's episode of the Q's and the A's with the Not So Silent Partner, we are talking about pay-per-click for real estate agents. We are talking why we have an office full of booze, and we're talking about how to get hired as a soon-to-be college graduate. So our first question today comes from our friend who is up in Massachusetts and he asks about whether or not it's uh, kind of counterintuitive to be suggesting that real estate agents should maybe lighten up on the search engine marketing, the pay-per-click ads, but really be drilling down through the Facebook dark posts. Uh, you know, here's what it comes down to. There are two different ways with Facebook dark posts to be targeting that demo that you're looking to go after. You could either go based on impressions, paying on impressions, or you could pay-per-click. Um, pay-per-click with Facebook dark posts is very, very different from my perspective than search engine marketing, buying AdWords through uh, Google, Bing, Yahoo, blah, 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 because it's a lot easier and more granular and targeted for real estate agents. Um, it's a lot easier to do, frankly. So if you're going to be investing money into Facebook dark posts, if you're going to be going after that targeting, for a lot of real estate agents, um, it makes more sense to be moving in that direction simply because when it comes to Google AdWords, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to put together. There are a lot of different elements to it, and a lot of real estate agents do it just for the sake of doing it without actually having any idea exactly what they're doing or how to do it. So for those real estate agents, it may in fact be a waste of time, energy, money, and resources when there are less expensive, more effective ways that you could do it. Okay, so Mike points out the fact that we have an office full of alcohol, and in, I'm sorry that you guys won't be able to see this as part of our Meerkat fee, but Ola, if you want to just show them a little touch of some of the alcohol that we do have here. Um, in fairness, we do have a lot of alcohol. We've got a whole scotch room in the back. Um, when we started the business, about 20% of our clients were bars and restaurants. And those 20% of the clients, we did a lot of filming on location. I was sick and tired of our team having to film around all of the customers, so I finally said, well, screw it. We're just going to build a bar here on location. Um, we've now moved in the direction of fewer bars and restaurants and a, a larger, much more diverse population of clients. Um, but I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, having a full bar in the office, makes for a pretty cool client happy hour once every couple of weeks. Um, it, we have a very non-traditional work environment. Um, we call it the Innovation and Libation Lab because we believe that sometimes thinking way outside the box, as you guys have probably seen in past episodes where I literally lit a box on fire with Bacardi 151. Connor, maybe we could show a little cutaway shot of, of me almost dying thanks to that 151 lighting the box on fire. Um, we don't believe in doing things the traditional way. Outrageous marketing is how we roll. Um, our staff, believe it or not, are not a bunch of alcoholics. Um, as a matter of fact, people here very, very rarely drink. If we have one or two drinks uh, a month at this point, that's a lot. We're too busy out there working for you and making you money, which is why you should hire us. Our third question is a video question sent to us today from Ola. Um, Ola, why don't we, here, we're gonna mix things up a little bit. I'm gonna take this Meerkat feed. I'm gonna turn it around on you. Ola, say hi. Who, uh, what was your question here, Ola? So essentially I asked um, if you have any tips on marketing yourself to get a job getting out of college. I'm gonna be um, a senior now and I was just wondering what would be the best way to uh, market yourself so that you have a lot of options and you could actually uh, have something to choose from once you're in the workforce. All right, Ola, I'm gonna hand this back to you so that we could swing this around. All right, I know uh, those of you who aren't catching that live Meerkat feed maybe missed one of these cutaways, which is one more reason why you should follow us on Meerkat for when we were doing these feeds. But Ola asks us about basically how to make yourself more marketable as a soon-to-be college grad. Um, Ola, and I'm actually gonna speak right to you with this and to our Meerkat followers as well. Uh, the key to making yourself more marketable in a job market that is highly, highly, highly saturated is doing things differently. Uh, I actually had a student reach out to us, uh, I believe that it was through Facebook, 
and sent over a video and said, hey, what do you think of this? I really want to join your team. Now, we didn't have any openings at that point, but that college student was able to cut through all of the noise and all of the clutter because that college student was not taking a traditional route. Now, Ola actually found us through LinkedIn. She started following my blogs on there, all of my content, and then she reached out and said, listen, this is why you need to ask me to be a part of your team. That was how she differentiated herself from the probably 150 different applicants that we had for the internship. So utilizing video, taking advantage of social media, I'm so sick and tired of people saying, you know, you shouldn't use social media when you're a college student because you're just gonna post pictures of yourself playing beer pong and it's going to result in you not getting a job. Social media as a college student or as a recent grad is a great way of showcasing your talents and your skills and your expertise and all of your abilities. So if you can make yourself stand out and you can establish that you as a millennial are going to bring something very, very unique, something very different to the table, embrace that go after it, hunt down the potential employers on LinkedIn, not in a creepy stalkerish, you know, I'm gonna show up at your house in the middle of the night kind of way, but hunt them down on there, connect with them, engage with them, ask them for feedback, ask them for suggestions, ask them if you could send off your resume and have them take a look and just say, I really admire you as a business leader and I'm hoping that you could offer some feedback and suggestions. So, that does it for this edition of the Not So Silent, Silent Partner. We're really building up a ton of momentum here. Thank you to those of you who um, are asking questions if we haven't gotten to it yet, I know, I'm sorry, we've got a lot of questions coming in, so keep asking them. Uh, marketing, social media, business development, you name it. Hit us up with a question. Hit us up on Instagram, on Snapchat, on Pinterest, on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, in the cave, on Active Rain. However you guys want to get us those questions, do it. To those of you who are watching live on Meerkat, thank you all so much. Make sure to follow the Silent Partner Marketing on Facebook, and we look forward to seeing all of you back here soon.